So welcome, Yura, uh, and the Injury Concepts page here, and today's discussion is a yet another hero. Another hero that has taken his life and decided to study one of the many interesting components of how we move and how injury, the process begins and what we can do about it to fix it. And that's why you guys are all here today because you're looking for answers and I'm trying to provide you a framework, uh, mostly sort of puzzles, puzzle pieces that are coming together because it's a complicated body that we have. It's, it's, it's got you know, trillions of cells that are all intercoordinated and connected that are doing the process of repair and it's really you know, essential that you understand a little bit. You don't have to understand it deep. And this particular video called Co-Contraction Mechanisms by Dr. Craig Liebenson is very complicated. If you were to break this down, and we're not going to do that today, to understand all the devils in the details here, your mind would be numb before I was through talking about this. But what I thought, again, I would sort of tackle today is to take the salient, the really meaty, uh, valuable components of Dr. Liebenson's work and synthesize it into today's video. Actually met the man many years ago. He came to our school. He challenged all of us during a couple of classes in biomechanics. Really got to like the guy. I love the style. Um, just as some other videos here that I've made about other heroes, they, these guys tend to have an ego and that's great because they back that ego up with science research. <clears throat> and again, providing valuable information as to how we move and why we're always in pain. So we go way back into my fitness background and the fitness industry has gone through unbelievable amounts of change over the years. When I first started probably back in 1984 or so, um, there was a movement towards not doing full sit-ups anymore. So I want you to notice what I've drawn today is somebody lying on the ground. Here's a rib cage, low back, hip bone, and I have a bent knee position. Now back in, you know, elementary school, many of you would have had your feet held down by a friend and you would have done a full sit-up. Well, back in the 80s, that would have been a standard thing to do, but it was quickly being replaced by the crunch. Oh, that's right. Well, we don't need to do a full sit-up anymore because if I do a full sit-up, I'm activating my hip flexors. I'm activating all these other things I don't need to activate because I just want six packs. I just want that rectus muscle to look great in the mirror. Now guys, the full sit-up activates the rectus muscle a lot. It activates everything. And the idea behind today's discussion of Craig Liebenson's work is called co-contraction mechanisms. Why is that important? Well, nothing in life is a crunch. You can't get out of bed doing a crunch. You have to do a full sit-up. You can't get out of your car only doing a crunch. You have to activate the abdominal muscles, the rectus muscle, transverse muscle, hip flexor, quadricep, hamstrings, glutes. Life is a set of movement patterns. Dr. Liebenson studied this quite intensely in regards to the crunch and to the sit-up and lumbar mechanics. So let's say you're going to a CrossFit class and you're doing a bunch of burpees, you're doing a bunch of bikes, you're doing a bunch of crunches, and or you're doing those lower abdominal exercises, which we'll talk about a little bit later that are quite dangerous, you are using a whole set of different muscles. Let's talk about that a little bit. In the drawing that I have here, rudimentary, don't, uh, don't slam me for my artistic skills here, I'm doing my best, but you can get a sense that there's a hip bone and a rib cage and our six-pack muscle here, our eight-pack muscle for some of you guys, is the rectus abdominis. These small little feathery ones I draw to the side are going to be um, internal oblique, external oblique, and transverse abdominis, the three other main groups that make up the middle here. Oftentimes these are referred to as your core muscles. That's another whole concept that we'll discuss in another video. I won't get into that today. But for this person to sit up, and do a full upright sit-up, there's a whole bunch of different things that have to take place. Let's talk about that. For the flexion event, flexion being lifting up and forward, my main mover, of course, is going to initiate my ribs going towards my hip is rectus and those transverse groups and the internal external obliques. But after that, that motion is performed and my thorax is lifted up towards my hip, 
Now I have to rotate about my hip to get me into that full upright position, and that's where I'm going to kick in, kick in the hip flexor muscle as a prime mover to draw my lumbar spine, which it originates on at the L1, L2 vertebrae, and pull it towards my femur, which it attaches to deep down in your groin on a fairly large bony tubercle that sits on the inside of your, of your way up on your inner thigh. So the beauty of this concept is if you want to strengthen the entire system, I try to dispel some myths about whether crunches are the best way or full sit-ups are the best way. Ultimately, if you look at the body as a functional unit, the things that it actually has to do each day to exist, like getting out of bed in the morning or getting out of a car, you want to appreciate co-contraction mechanisms because your body is doing this. It's doing it by a process of agonist. Agonist is the muscle that makes the movement. Antagonist is the muscle that would oppose the movement. And the brain and the extrapyramidal system and the cerebellum are all feeding neurological activity to this whole complex series of one group firing a little bit, the other group having to shut off because if I fire my bicep and my tricep at the same time, my arm would stay static. So to do a curl, the co-contraction mechanism is going to be mostly my bicep muscle pulling in. Ah, but my tricep muscle has to allow that motion and shut off. It's never totally off. It's just off enough to allow the bicep to win out. So in the event that I want to actually extend my arm back again, my tricep would win out and my bicep would have to concede. The beauty is, is this all beautifully finely regulated inside in a very neurological way. And Dr. Liebmanson studied these co-contraction mechanisms to show just type of influence each of these muscle groups has. So what's the takeaway from this? Well, in low back injuries, these sometimes pain can shut some of this firing down. So if I, again, going back to my bicep again, if I had pain in my elbow, and I fired my bicep muscle, my brain might selectively shut down the ability for my bicep to do its work because pain is associated with movement. This is very often the case as when we look at that lumbar lordosis, and I discussed this in my Dr. McGill um, video quite a bit, is the vertebrae are having to slowly all go from a lordotic position to a flattened position to lift up to do a sit-up. If co-contraction mechanisms are all perfect and that firing of agonist and antagonist is all working in a nice, beautiful, smooth, fluid fashion, a sit-up is an excellent exercise to do. But you wouldn't want to be doing sit-ups if you're in acute back pain, if your back is hurting you. You might go to those fairly quickly though in the rehabilitation process. Remember, pain can sometimes be a great guide. But I would probably direct you to do maybe a small crunch and begin the baby steps process of getting yourself back to doing a sit-up. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, you do want to be able to do sit-ups because you can't live without doing a sit-up or at least some portion of a sit-up. So, the beautiful work of Dr. Craig Liebenson, credit given to the man that deserves it, as I do on all these videos, and to appreciate the beautiful symmetry that the body uses to perform almost all of our daily activities. These co-contraction mechanisms are amazing. Go do some more reading on Dr. Liebenson's work on that if you want a little bit more detail. You can also go to my website and to my learning modules. I'll be discussing some of these concepts in greater detail there with some more pictures and more some fancy uh, graphics. And again, take control of your health. The more you know, the less you're good to guess. If you are having problems in your back when you do sit-ups, the first thing to do is begin to address that issue by learning how to get back into doing sit-ups. You're exposing the weakness, you're exposing the pain for where it is. If solutions come from that exposure, do it in a smart, gradual way. Again, look for knowledge. Stop guessing, start knowing, okay? Take care.